Hello. Uh, uh, today uh, we are going to start with the new chapter and uh, the last uh, slide set. Uh, we are starting something new, a different paradigm, uh, which is uh, slightly complicated or not complicated, but slightly different than uh, most of the other existing paradigms. And uh, there are not many instances of this paradigm, but this is interesting because it shows us what we can do uh, with logic and how uh, a universal uh, organic language or universal programming environment can be uh, handled uh, through just following logical clauses and trying some uh, proof uh, based on logic. Uh, so it will be a very intensive set of slides. You may be missing some points and you can go back and uh, try and we will ease uh, your uh, approach to the uh, paradigm by having some analogies to the functional paradigm so you can uh, write programs easier. So basically it is also called declarative programming and it is 60s and early 70s. It, it's history goes back to that. Uh, and it was some sort of attempt to get new generation uh, of computation so that AI is more involved than some uh, the uh, 70s ambitious uh, AI projects uh, try to uh, get this fifth generation of computing through this um, smart systems by human uh, call it uh, intelligence, uh, made our uh, computer systems more uh, smart. And they introduce uh, this first order clauses that we call or clauses, and SLD resolution, uh, which is uh, the logical proof technique, uh, basically, a search based uh, proof technique. Uh, and um, the idea. Uh, applied in the most important uh, member of the programming uh, languages, uh, the member of the paradigm as Prolog. Uh, then people came up with different uh, constraint logic programming languages, like Alfred, Godel, Mercury, Oz, Chao, Lambda, Prolog, Datalog, and so on. Uh, each is targeting some specific uh, algebra and different uh, system of logic, but um, uh, more complicated than Prolog, uh, so that they can solve, for example, finite arithmetic as well, and so on. Uh, where Prolog is only capable of handling uh, first order clauses, we are going to uh, mention in a minute. <coughs> Sorry. So, some uh, basics uh, you don't have to do much, know much of those details, but just to give you a brief idea of what is going on logically. I will have a very simple slide. So, uh, closed logically is just the junction of universally quantified literals. So, if you have uh, variables in this uh, logical uh, literals, uh, the, the, those variables are universally uh, quantified. So, for all x, y, z, and so on. And uh, it is, uh, they are disjunction of them. So it is like L1 and L2 for all X, Y, Z, blah, blah, L, Y, L, uh, or L2, or and so on. In a logic program clause, uh, we have a special uh, type where we have one positive and all the remaining uh, clause uh, literals are uh, negative. This will end up uh, in our uh, if transition, if you remember from uh, logic design courses uh, and discrete mathematics uh, probably. You will have uh, this type of uh, disjunction can be converted into the if clause and implication, basically. So it says that if you write this way, you can convert it into this form, the equivalent form, a1 and a2 and blah, blah, a n. Then, if all of them are true, then A is true. 
for all variables, a1 to a n implies a. Uh, so this will give us a dependency. If you like to prove a, you need to prove all of these a1 to a n. And if you can, then a is true. A go clause, on the other hand, it is uh, similar to that, similar to that, but we don't have this uh, head clause, so we don't have this positive clause. Everything is negative. So for all variables set, uh, uh, one of them should fail. Uh, this is for uh, the reverse of the operation. So if you, for example, try to prove this for all x, y, z, and if you cannot, that means L1 and L2 and Lan are true. That's, that's called proof by reputation. We like to satisfy, unsatisfy this clauses with goal clause, and we find there exists some x, y, z, whatever your variables are, some uh, combination of them which will lead us a1 is true, a2 is true, and a n is true, and all of them are true. Uh, so this is uh, the logical parts, it's the logicians call them linear resolution of definite programs with constraints and self datum. You don't have to know uh, further detail. But uh, this idea uh, can be turned into a product program and a logic program. And it is written like this. Uh, Father Ahmed uh, Aisha, Father Hassan. So the, the, this, this is just set of relations, set of relations among some uh, names. You should read this capital uh, letters as variables, and all the remaining ones are called atoms in Prolog, but you can uh, consider them as just simple names or string for the time being. Uh, so how uh, does that uh, convert it into uh, logic, let me write down just to give you the analogy. So it says that for all variables, actually there, are, there is no variable here, so we don't have to write that down here. Uh, we have father Ahmed Aisha if true, because we don't have this true part, true part is Implied that means father Ahmed is father of Aisha always without needing any other uh, clause. And it goes like that mother Fatma Aisha. True. When we hit here, now we have after a couple of other clauses, I have this for all x and y, parents x and y, if father x, y. It says if uh, x is father of y, then he is parent of y. And coming to the uh, last clause, Grandparents for all, all x, y, z, let's say. Grandparents x, y, if parents x, z, and parents y, z. So both of them are required to prove this. So logically it looks like that. And when you ask a uh, prolog, a goal close, uh, like this is used for uh, goal or querying prolog, and you ask this mother, Atije Fatma, from existing information here, 
since this is a fact already given in the prolog program, let's just say something very useful. Yes, Atija is mother of Fatma. However, if you write here Ali, according to this program, we don't know if Atija is mother of Ali. Actually, we don't know anything about parents of Ali. We don't know Ali exists at all. Prolog cannot prove this. Prolog cannot uh, uh, find any instance that will uh, make this one uh, true. As a result, it will t tell you false. I cannot prove that. But this is not it. It is more interestingly, we can answer more complicated questions. So let me show you the program uh, in the real interpreter. Okay. So this is Sixus uh, Prolog, uh, sorry, uh, SWI Prolog, so we have to use. SWI uh, Prolog is free, so we will be using this one. So this, a family PL, so it is family PL in my code, uh, exactly the same code. And this is how I load a prolog program between, between, uh, between square brackets. If I have a file family.pl, and if I use this syntax at the bottom, it will load that program. Now I can query prolog. If Hassan is, so this is the goal close, I'm going to query and will say false. Hassan is not mother of Ahmed, obviously. I should have written father. I will say true. Also, in order to make it more interesting, I can ask this question. Hassan is parent of Ahmed or not? And put tell that true. Uh, the semicolon means, give me more answers. Prolog will try to give you all possibilities. Uh, it doesn't make sense in this case. So if Hassan is Ahmed, Hassan is a parent of Ahmed many times, but Prolog will answer that. It, it means that Prolog can prove that Hassan is parent of Ahmed in multiple different ways. First one is a true, second one will be true, third one will be true, then it will be false. Always it is going to terminate with a false. The semicolon here is telling, give me more answers. If you press enter, it will just terminate. Semicolon, it will give you false. Now, uh, let us have more complicated example. Also, uh, it will answer the grandparent relation. Grandparents of, so here in this uh, setting, we have Atija Fatma, Fatma Aisha is a pet, so I can ask if Atija is grandparent of Aisha, and follow will tell me true. But they, it, it, it isn't not, it is not uh, interesting yet. It will be more interesting if I can ask this question. If Hassan is grandparent of someone. Now Prolog gave me an answer. If X is Ahmed, then this can be proven to be true or if you press semicolon, it will say false at the end. But now, if you remember, we have uh, some exists x. So this uh, query means if there is an x such that parent or son x is true, logically, uh, and the prolog is going to give the answer Yes, it is parent of Ahmed. Now let us ask if Hassan is grandparents of someone. 
Yes, it is grandparent of Aisha. So, Hassan Ahmed, Ahmed, Aisha. Okay. Now, uh, let us make it more interesting. Let us tell if X is grandparent of Yes, Aisha has two grandparents. One is Hassan, the other is Hatija. So it is giving me two cases as I press semicolon. If I press enter, it will terminate. As I press semicolon, it will give all grandparents of Aisha. More interestingly, it can also search for all grandparents' relations. Hassan, Aisha, and Hatija. Uh, if you like uh, to get more answers, you can add more uh, facts into our relation. So you can put everyone, for example, you can have all your family input as this father-mother relations. Uh, the remaining uh, clauses will tell you who is grandparent of whom. So, uh, and uh, this is a result of the logical uh, proof search that I just uh, mentioned. Okay. Uh, and the goal close is just this, there exists G case, and it will try to disprove the reverse. And as a result, it will prove the uh, existence predicate here. So uh, what is Prolog? Prolog is, uh, a constraint logic programming language on first order terms. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the definition. First order means you cannot have variables in the head of the structures, head of the clauses. Uh, but in the body you can use and it will be first order term. Second mechanism behind Prolog is the unification and the unification is bidirectional. So far in the Haskell, you have seen uh, actual unification in parameter passing. So when you declare a function in Haskell, uh, you define patterns, and when you are calling, those patterns are matched against your uh, formal, uh, sorry, actual parameters one by one. But it is bidirectional, colored to the function declaration. In Prolog, it is unification, uh, bidirectional, meaning this. Uh, program the clauses can unify the variable in the uh, parameter back as we see in our grandparent x y relation the program instantiated x and y so it is unified and it sends some information back to the caller uh, very loosely uh, you can uh, make it uh, similar to uh, pass by reference and pass by value, but loosely. Because the operation is unification, it is not parameter passing in the uh, classical sense. We are going to talk about that soon. Uh, backtracking is the uh, second mechanism, an important mechanism. Prolog uh, will try all of the possibilities in order to prove your search. That means it will try all uh, correct results out of the existing set of relation. And this will uh, make it a recursive uh, make it able to recurse into data structures and make some uh, computation uh, in this repeating recursive manner. So it will make this uh, logic proving system a uh, universal programming language. Okay, so what are uh, prolog terms? So basically we have uh, four uh, classes in a prolog. Atoms and numbers are similar to each other. Uh, we have variables and we have uh, the structures. An atom is basically any uh, string that starts with a uh, small capped letter, this is a must, and continues with any of the uh, letters, capital or small, and digits. And 
any number of those. Or all sequence of only punctuations. Uh, we have special forms of atoms like this. Uh, square bracket, curly braces, semicolon, and ex uh, exclamation mark. Uh, they are used a lot. Uh, and if you have a more complicated uh, sentence, for example, you make like to make it atom, you put it in, you put it in single quotes. Uh, some dialects, uh, some implementations also use back quotes. Uh, SWI, it is different. Uh, back codes are regular strings, but single is uh, pretty much standard, so you put them in the single code. So the idea is this one. Let me show you in the interpreter. Uh, atoms are like the constants of the language, so you can consider them as any arbitrary uh, constant not string like the uh, sequence of cards kind of string but uh, they behave like constant literals in the language so black white Arche, Aisha, Fatma, Adige, whatever you may think is like an atom so for example x is an atom atom is a close testing if it's an atom or not uh, however, one X is not, basically it is a syntax error. So, uh, colloquial, put a boundary between one and X. Uh, XX will not be an atom, it will be a variable. So, uh, only small letters should start an atom, otherwise it is not an atom. However, after that you can have as many other letters or digits but no punctuation it will be an atom um, uh, also the punctuation is atom as I said but that string should only have punctuation so for example dot 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 will be an atom or This one is an atom. Uh, the uh, comma is uh, has some problems. Uh, semicolon uh, cannot be used in this one because it is a separator, same as parentheses. But other than that, you can have any such operations. For example, minus looks like a subtraction operator but you can use it as a part of an atom in this form in this form and this form all of them are atoms uh, or you can have this hello i am a long atom so it will be true but of course this is not because there's double quotes are strings and they have a this different meaning, basically. It is actually a string, a list of cars in Polok. Uh, So this is how also you can have, for example, if you have an atom like that, one X, you can convert into an atom. Uh, the numbers are different. They are treated differently because they can take part in arithmetic operations. So uh, they uh, are not called an atom, but they are uh, a different data type. We can, you can consider this as a data type. So we have a huge data type called atom, huge data type called number, and huge data type called variables and structures. Uh, structures are composed uh, weight, a composite way of having those. Uh, so we have those, and minus can be put. Or if you like, you can just have this scientific notation. 
But other than that, you are not allowed to use numbers uh, as they are. So if you put an X here, that will be a boundary. So it will be one, two, three, and the arithmetic expressions are not evaluated. So they are not arithmetic expressions about structures unless you forcefully evaluate them. So basically this one uh, is not a number. It is actually a structure which is in uh, headed by minus, it is one minus one to three minus this value. So this is our data type. So going back to the slides. Uh, the, um, we have uh, special rules for square brackets and curly braces and semicolon. They are only items as they are. So you cannot use them, uh, attach them with the others. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. So they have to be alone. Uh, and numbers. And uh, the next uh, set is the variables. Everything starting with an underscore or capital letter, followed by combination of digits and letters, uh, are variables. A variable uh, doesn't have a value uh, in the program. But when you are proving something in a goal clause or in your program, it is uh, instantiated. Instantiation means the variable getting a temporary value. And during that proof search, during that backtracking point, that temporary value is uh, used for uh, that variable. And as long as it is consistent with uh, the remaining parts, uh, that variable uh, can be passed uh, to the outside the goal close. So that's how we get the values out of the uh, product program. Uh, so they are initially anything and during the search they can have temporary uh, values. Uh, underscore alone has a special meaning. It has don't care variable. That means it is universal match. It matches anything and forgets that, so they, they it doesn't have uh, uh, actual program, okay. actual, uh, sorry. Um, uh, it doesn't have an actual uh, variable position. It matches anything and yeah, forgets it. Uh, structures are uh, the, the way of composing uh, values out of uh, other uh, values. Uh, it starts with an atom hat, so it is like a tuple. However, in Prolog, tuples should have a hat. That means the name. Uh, and that name has to be an atom, not a number, not a variable, and not a, a, another structure. Uh, this requirement of having it an, an atom makes it a first order clause. If it can be a variable, if it could be a variable, it would have been the uh, uh, second order term. Uh, it can have uh, one or more arguments. The zero argument is like an atom, so it doesn't, if it doesn't have any argument, it, is, uh, be, it's, it behaves like an atom. Uh, it should have at least one argument and it has many arguments and there is no restriction. There is no data type enforcing this many uh, values, and these are the data types and so on. You can arbitrarily compose structures any way you like. Uh, you should enclose them with parentheses and separate, separate them by comma. Uh, there shouldn't be any space between head and the parentheses, and uh, arguments can be any other prolog term, meaning it is recursive. So let us see some structures. So this is an atom, just let me show you. This is also an atom. 
that if you put something in the thing, it will be false. Uh, uh, the variables, so this is a variable. This is not a variable. So in the goal clause, you can tell this x is three. And if x is a variable, it will be false because it is instantiated. It is not a free variable anymore. So this very close makes sure that. Uh, so this x is three will make it three. Then it will not be a variable anymore. Its value will be known. Uh, the variable, uh, if you like to have some variable like that, it will fail. If you like, you can put an underscore in the beginning to make it a variable uh, like this. Um, what about atoms? Uh, the atoms are, uh, sorry, structures. Structures start with a head and contains uh, arbitrary number of other terms like this. But of course, uh, you don't have that. So X is this one. So we now define a structure, had a start, and the rest are the arguments. Uh, if you define it this way, Uh, it is false. So this is, uh, I believe this uh, SWI uh, has that uh, zero uh, arguments. Items are also possible in this one, uh, but uh, the we usually have at least one argument in the body. And the most important restriction is, of course, this one. Uh, y of A, we cannot do that. So this is invalid. There is no prolog term, term like this. This cannot be a prolog. Because the second order, it has a variable in the head. If you like, you can make it like that. Of course, this is what this is. Uh, uh, atom, y becomes an atom, so this is now a structure. Uh, so I have a table in the slides uh, to, to show you uh, oh, uh, I couldn't show you that. You cannot use space between Here. We cannot use that. Uh, otherwise, uh, the start and this parentheses will lose the relation. Okay. Uh, so in this example, you see many atoms and numbers. This is an atom because it starts with a small letter. This is a very roof. This one is a variable, starts with underscore. This is an atom. This is a structure because it is a string, basically. A string is uh, just a list of characters, so it will turn into a structure. Uh, this is an atom because it is punctuation. But this is not because it contains a non-punctuation. This is a syntax error, not a term. Uh, two underscores will be a variable. Uh, this is a number, and uh, this is a number. These are also numbers. I'm not sure about the syntax, if it is supported or not. Uh, this is also a number. X4 is a structure. 
but this one has a problem. Okay. This one has no, but this one has a problem. Uh, this is the number, but this is not a number, a number, this is not a term, this is a number. So you should have a preceding number from before that and after that, succeeding number. This is a structure, this is another structure, so atom, the punctuation is an atom, so atom hat is okay here. Uh, you cannot have a variable hat like this one. You cannot have an integer hat like this one, so they are not terms. You can have arbitrary, I believe this is incorrect, so. So let me just cancel this one. And instead, check this, okay? Uh, so uh, it is a uh, structure, we can have arbitrary heterogeneous number of elements in any of the arguments and also we can have uh, variables too uh, with other structures and so on. So here dot is uh, atom so we can use it in this way as well. Um, so now uh, we have uh, defined our uh, terms, all of the valid terms in uh, Prolog this way. Uh, so uh, now let us see the elements of other elements of the program. You will not see any more uh, syntactic detail in Prolog. Actually, I have told you 90% of the syntax with those two couple of slides. Uh, we have these clauses and predicates uh, which are also structures, by the way. Uh, so uh, this uh, prolog program consists of either of those. Either they consist of this unit clauses, which means uh, Father, Aish Father Aisha Ahmed holds if true. So it always holds. They are sometimes called facts, uh, so you don't need to prove this relation. The pro relation is presumed to be true. Uh, in in non-unit clauses, we have a head clause, which is a structure, followed by usually comma-separated uh, list of uh, body clauses. So we have literals in uh, syntax of structures and this form. Uh, the arguments can be variables, etc. It can be any term. And it is terminated by a dot. It can continue in the next line and so on. It can cover multiple lines and at the end you will terminate it with dot. So this means in order to prove this uh, head clause, you have to prove this one and this one. That means parent x, z is true, and parent z, x are true, then grant x, y is true. They are variables, so what Prolog has to do is try to prove all of them by traversing all of the relations, and this traversal is called the backtracking. Uh, also, we can have uh, parentheses, and sometimes we can have semicolon as well. So, comma and semicolon have different meanings, Comma means and, semicolon means or. And in order to uh, provide this functionality of or, Prolog can prove either of them, either this one or this one. And this is called the backtracking position for Prolog. That means if you try to get all of the answers, Prolog will try to prove this one and this one both. Uh, so this, um, you start traversal, you execute a program in Prolog through a goal clause, and goal clause try to prove this head clause. And in order to prove that, the following clauses become a goal clause and they are proven and so on. It tries to prove something in order to prove that, prove another thing in order to prove another thing, and as a result, it will uh, try all of the proof uh, choices. Uh, 
the prolog lists are uh, very uh, uh, similar to Haskell. Actually, internally, uh, they are uh, structures in Haskell. They are uh, uh, column separated uh, structures, headed structures. In prolog, they are not headed structures. Uh, and we can use this uh, syntactic sugar to simplify all operations. So let me show you. So when you define A, B, C, display that. Uh, a, B, C is equal to A dot B dot C. Um, this is the terminator. So I'm asking this question and getting this. I, I have some compatibility issue actually. This is uh, pretty much standard in Polo, but I believe it's doing something optimized way. So this is a different uh, implementation, uh, different way of implementing lists uh, in uh, this type of prolog, I believe. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, let me try the other machine. This is, uh, they are using a different hat, okay. Uh, sorry for the delay, but this is how you uh, decompose uh, the thing. Uh, so basically, SWI people decided to use the syntax. Which is quite strange, unfortunately. So this is how you write uh, a list in a, a difficult and uh, strange way. Uh, basically, it will turn out into this. Um, uh, and luckily, we can represent the list in this form. So we don't have to use the other syntax. Uh, this is an atom hat. One is the first element of the list. 
and the remainder is another list. In the remainder, we have a head clause. Two is the first of the remainder. And we have further reminder, which is empty list. Uh, like in Haskell, we can use a similar syntax. Uh, so I can say, for example, one, two, three, four is X and the remainder. Uh, please note that we have the square brackets. In Haskell, we didn't have that. It will give us x is one and remainder is two, three, four. This is how we divide the list and uh, compose and use that. Okay, so this uh, back code uh, strings are also uh, similar to uh, Pascal. It is array of uh, ASCII values, not uh, cards, but array of ASCII values. So for example, you can have your name here. Give you this. Uh, so it is basically this list, like this one is actually, or let me write it more. You find it A, B, C, D. We'll say true. So uh, this uh, back code of strings are similar to uh, Ascalis's list of uh, ASCII values. So it is in fact a list, but not uh, double coded ones. So it is. Uh, in actual standards, uh, this should behave in the same way with back codes. And this way, I should be able to take the head of the list and so on. I believe this it behaves like an 18. So, uh, no, it's something else. Uh, the standards uh, and the implementations uh, as they uh, update changing. So, uh, of course, uh, SWI Prolog has some flags and configuration tools, so it will look uh, more uh, standard. Uh, so, in its standard form, this is dot, and it is working this way. If you test Moon Prolog instead of SWI, SWI, unfortunately, I don't have. Uh, it will behave this way, more standard. Uh, this is the syntax for getting head and tail of the list, so dividing this into two. Uh, so we can recurse as we do in Haskell. Uh, this is uh, a strange syntax, but it works. So you say one, two, three, and remainder. So in this way, you say that uh, one, two, three are the first three elements, and remainder can be got, can be received by this way. And back quotes in my example, uh, double quotes works uh, similar, but ASCII values and numbers instead of uh, characters. And lists are heterogeneous as in. Python or uh, script languages. So it is not like ASCII. In ASCII it is homogeneous. We don't have any type restriction. We can have lists of lists of structures and so on. Uh, so now let us uh, talk about uh, unification. So as we combine uh, this, uh, terms and unification, we will end up in the base of the prolog, so we can uh, go uh, forward. Unification is uh, bidirectional, so it is uh, like not like in Haskell, so. Let me give you the Haskell uh, case. 
you define, for example, uh, say, with A and uh, R and V in a Haskell function. So that when you call F with three and with five and list of one, two, three, Uh, we four, no three, we five. So let us give more we are skip from the data. If you call this way, Pascal had uh, the unidirectional uh, unification, meaning this leaf is matched against this leaf, three matched against A, so that A will be bound to three. Leaf 5 matches R, so R will be leaf 5, not 5, but leaf 5. And the rest, whatever complex structure is, will be unified with B. And this is called unidirectional unification. The color pattern matched against the declaration. So as a result of this, V will be assigned to list of nodes we leave five okay and r will be five and a will be three so these are the uh, instantiations you will end up with this unidirectional unification. In the uh, prologue, on the other hand, uh, the function, we can consider predicates as function, as you, a predicate can uh, give value to the goal clause, and it can be propagated from the bottom to the uh, caller, the uh, starting goal clause. So in this way, we can get the information out of the prologue. So here, for example, when you say same x, x, so you are looking for uh, same Ali, it will give you Ali and the y. And if you ask for same x, Ali, it will give you uh, Ali as the y again. So Ali is in this uh, Go, Ali will instantiate X and this goal close will instantiate this X because they are the same. And thanks to this, it will instantiate Y. Uh, as a result, we will end up in Y is Ali here. And it is the B direction unification. Uh, so this uh, variable instantiations is the way of getting information out of problem. If you have noticed, there is no return value. We, we don't have functions, we have only relations. And in order to get information out of these relations, we use this uh, unidirectional or bidirectional unification. Uh, so how unification works? If X is an atom and you try to unify X with Y, Y should be the atom also, and they should be the same atom. The only way unifying two atoms is they should be the same. This holds for numbers as well. The only way to unify two numbers is to have them the same. Second is a more complicated definition, which is structure equals. In the structure equals, we have two structures. Uh, if X is a structure, Y has to be structure as well. Uh, they should have the same arity. Arity means number of arguments. There should be same number of arguments. And uh, their uh, heads, if you remember, they had to be uh, the atoms as well. So we have HX and HY. 
they should be the same atom, they should be unified, we cannot have variables here. Then we recursively uh, test for unification x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on, xn, ym. One to one unification of both. And unification is by definition v directional again. And third one is if uh, one of them is a variable, then it is. Uh, checked against existing uh, set of instantiations and it is instantiated into this uh, right hand side. Here informations are co information is combined in case of the variable unification. And so far if x is not instantiated to anything else it is unified to y as long as it is consistent with existing set of uh, unifications. Otherwise, unification will fail. So, you, uh, the equal sign in prolog is the unification. So, it has some sort of a side effect. It can instantiate new variables. It can instantiate variables on the right hand side and left hand side. So, it is not test for uh, compatibility or test for equals. It is unification which will end up your variables having some values. A, B, two different atoms, false. A, B, C, and A, B, C, that is true because these codes are not part of the atom you define. X is 12, X is a variable. It is true, but it has a side effect. It is true if X is 12. So now it has an instantiator. It is only true if X is 12. In case of structures, A versus A, check. One versus Y, instantiation. X versus two, instantiation. If X is two and Y is one, then it is true. In case of this one, it gets, gets more complicated. One X, one Y, Y is one, is an instantiation. Then X is Y, Y was one, already, so x is also one. So it will have two instantiations. x is one and y is one. And x and y are the same. This one, sorry, uh, y one, an instantiation. x, y, one by one. This is an instantiation, x, y, is another instantiation. So I said that y is 1 and x is y, so x is supposed to be 1 as well. And then I try to instantiate x with 2, I have a conflict. x is 1 and x is 2 are conflicting values. So this part of the relation and this part conflicts each other. So there is no solution for this equality. So I say that is false, unification failed. This one, A1 match anything, A1 fails because arities are different. Same thing for head clause, changing only head, uh, sorry, head atom. That will be different. X is AX, so this is the interesting part. You cannot display that result, but it is successful because like it is in ASCAP, the prolog doesn't have to go deep into the structure. It will assume that X is a variable and A is a structure. It unifies X with the structure and up A inside of A inside of an infinite number of A's. Uh, this gets more complicated in order to prove the head clause is okay. CXD, so I say Y is unified as CXD. CAY is unified as Z. So this second term becomes CA 
y is cxd, so it's a c a c x d if you expand this way. And then I have a t which is x. So this will end up in this solution. C A C T D. Okay. And this one. Y is C X D. So this one. And X is C A Y. So Y is C X D. X is C A Y. So it will be again a mutual uh, infinite recursion. If you try to expand y, you will end up in x, and if you try to expand x, it will end up in a y. But it is true, so it can be unified this way or another. So uh, let us try those and prolog. Okay, example, A is B will fail. A is A will succeed, succeed. A is A will succeed. A, A one, two, three, bit A, uh, X, X, Y, X will fail because it will try to prove uh, one is equal to two and equals to uh, one equals to three. Okay, but if you use this one, I call success, success, and also here you can say, for example, x, a, b, c equals a, a, b. And x. Okay, because x is instantiated to ABC and it is compatible by both sides. Uh, so you can have a arbitrary number of such things and A1 equals A12 will fail. Anything is going to fail as well. Or using a different head goals with the same arguments is going to fail. So, uh, so now let us uh, go back to slides and let us define our uh, first uh, program. Uh, so the idea is um, you put all of your uh, alternatives of head clause uh, with same name heritage together. So if you try to define parent relation, all parent relations should be following each other on a uh, sequence. So you shouldn't interleave different relations from uh, each other. Other than that, there is no restriction. So the order is not important. Uh, and number of uh, head clauses are not limited and so on. And these are like relations. So starting from uh, our first example, the easiest example, the member relation. I can uh, write the member relation as this way. Uh, a term is a member of a list if it is a first element of the list. I can tell you that very easily. So now I can write it down this way. This tells me X is member of this list with many elements. If you have square bracket open and close, there is no element, so there is no member. It is the first element and the remaining element. If X is first, then I have found a member, the first element. So I'm going to get it. So this relation holds if X is the first element of the list. So this first close is that if x is the first element of the list. Let us look at the second one. We don't have an otherwise here, but if x is 
member of the remaining list, it is member in, member of the full list as well. So I can write it this way. So member relation is written in two steps. First, and look for the remainder. So this looks like a, a functional call with some recursive style. And prolog search will try all of the alternatives and it will try to pull this one as well. In shorter term, we can write it this way because x is x, so this is the unification. Unification will work any place in the uh, close, in the head or the body. And I don't care the remaining in this case. And in the second case, I don't care for the first one and I search for the remaining. And this is my member declaration. So now let us look at this member definition. Uh, we already have this. So let us write our member definition in our interpreter and query it. What will happen? This is a trick I am using. It is getting the pro program from the in comment line directly. So I say members, or let us not confuse it. It's a built in member declaration. It is already available in Polo. And I said that. I press Ctrl D, now it is going to be compiled and now it is available. Now I can ask this question, if one is a member of 3, 2, 1, 5, and follow will give me true. Uh, if you have multiple ones here, follow you will give you two trues. So pressing semicolon will end up in all ways of Proving this relation. So in this uh, type of call, what Prolog did is it will fit into our first clause here. And in the in a call like that, it has found our one in the second clause after that, this one. So basically, Prolog will have a tree-like search. It will search this part of the tree, then the second part of the tree. In order to do that, it will make uh, for the remainder this part and this part. It will branch and try all of the possibilities. Uh, more interestingly, Prolog can give you other answers, like this question as well. Who are the members of 213? Thanks to the direction unification, can answer this question as well. If you like to get more out of Prolog, it will be uh, more disappoint disappointing. It will be disappointing because what it can do is this one. It will generate variables and infinitely it will insert uh, variables to the beginning of the list and it will say that I can find one in the first position, second position and so on. If you like to be more pathetic, you can get this. Whatever X is, I can put in arbitrary position or this one will work as well. Okay. Uh, so also let us try this, uh, our uh, unification like that, x is cx, okay, that works, but other than that, it has no purpose. Um, so this is the member declaration, as we can see, Prolog has some sort of magical thing. You implement a member function, you get, for example, for all elements of its relation as well. Uh, this is how you get this uh, declarative program. 
So these are our examples we already done. Now let me uh, talk about uh, backtracking a little bit and then uh, we'll uh, finish this uh, first part. The backtracking is the search procedure and it will try to uh, search for all alternatives. If you have a same head close with same arity and same uh, atom head, you create a different backtracking point. So in our member relations, we have two uh, backtracking positions. Member uh, as the first uh, element of the list and the remainder. So we have two alternatives. And someone should look for these two alternatives. And it is the backtracking. You can call Prolog as a backtracking engine with direction notification on this first order term. So this is the brief description of Prolog. Uh, so for each backtracking positions, Prolog will like it will make a search like a main search at the backtracking position. It will introduce the backtracking and try first path. If it is success, it's going to return that back. If it's a failure, it will go to the last backtracking po point and try again. When it finds a success, ask user show the instantiations. And if a user presses semicolon, it will try the next one. If user presses enter, it will return true and exit. In this way, it will try to uh, search for all of the possibilities, the possibilities. So let me show you how this happens. So this is the result of the full trace uh, of this uh, goal close member B, A, B, C, D, A, B, C. So uh, this is our semicolon position in Prolog. So we have two alternatives, this one or this one. So in the first case, it will look for uh, the first head clause. So member B, A, B, C is matching member X, X. And B, in order to prove X, uh, this match, this member B and this member X, X, B has to be uh, unified with A, which is a failure, so it fails here. So it will go back to last backtracking position here and try the second alternative. In this case, this second one. And in the second one, it will go here. Uh, B, don't care, and remainder. So this one unified with, so this close, uh, sorry, this close is unified with this one will end up in X is B, A is don't care, and remainder is B, C. So this one will turn out into uh, X is, sorry, I cannot write it, B, and remainder uh, will become B e and C. However, this match does not prove this close. In order to prove this, it has, you have to prove this second part. So in order to prove this one here, you have to prove member B, B, C. And you try again, this is a new goal close for you. You start over. I would like to prove member B, B, C. And in order to do so, I have two options again. One, two, in the first one, this unification will succeed because B is B, and this is true. So far, the interpreter will get, okay, I have found the solution, remember, and this one is the last clause, so that's, this one is true. As a result, this one is true, so whole thing is true, so it will return true. If user presses enter, the goal close terminates, and you don't have further results. But if you press semicolon, you will end up in going for the other solutions. For other solutions, you go back to the last backtracking position. Go here, try to prove this. And the X will be B, remainder will be C. It will try to prove B equals C. Fail, last backtracking position. Second one. Uh, B 
remainder in order to prove that it has to prove member B empty. There is no such head clause. People fail. Last backtracking position, no other backtracking positions left. Last backtracking positions, no other backtracking positions left. Last backtracking position, no other backtracking positions left. So it will tell you fail. In this case, member D, A, B, C has a new call clause. The same story, however, it will go here, failed, second backtracking. In order to prove that D, B, C has to be proven. In order for that, we have two backtracking positions, introduce them, fail, try this, this one, two backtracking positions, try this, fail, try this, fail, 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 fail. no other backtracking positions left. And you go back to all close and tell host, I couldn't prove this. There is no solution. And uh, as the last one, let us come to this one, where x is a variable in the call close. Okay. Now the alternatives, x is a variable, so you give x, x, when it is unified with this first clause, x becomes unified with A. As a result, if x is A, it will be true. Your first solution will come from here. And if you press semicolon, it will go back to taking position and try to prove this. This one says x and remainder. Uh, and the A is dropping out. So in order to prove that, x is, should be member of B and C. And when you are proving that, we have two backtracking positions. First one will say X is B, true. It is going back to the goal close. If you have some uh, attaching or grouping, regrouping uh, items uh, and setting new instantiations out, it, they are combined and you will get your answer here. Uh, then second one goes C is true, then at the end failed. So if user kept pressing, pressing semitone, you will get all of the answers. Uh, so this is how backtracking works as an example. I have a more complicated example, but not for uh, this video. As the last thing in this part, I would part of the video, I would like to show you the spec tracking in work. You can call trace dot to the call of interpreter. It will enable tracing so that you can observe the behavior. You can use this as a, a debugger as well. So when you ask this question, if B is a member of ABC, I have written this correctly. So let us start from the beginning. Member of B, A, B, C. So it says that you like to go inside of this proof. And I say enter means yes in this case. I go in and it says it's just try. Uh, all of the backtracking positions which are feasible. The first one wasn't feasible at all. So it tried the second one, and second one leads into BBC. And it has found a unification point, and exit means proof is success. It will exit from the one level up until say two. When I press semicolon, it will redo the last backtracking position, which is this one. And actually it consumed uh, B as the first member, so it will try the second one. Second one will fail, and it's going to fail back to the top level, and it will say false. If you execute this in X case, it will call this one. First solution is coming from first alternative. We'll take it when I press semicolon, it will redo, go back to the backtracking point, 
and try to prove the second remainder part. And this is my second alternative. We do in the last backtracking position, go back, third, and to we'll redo this, this one. No backtracking position will fail, it will go fail. Since no backtracking position is left, it will fail all. So this is uh, the backtracking uh, in work. So basically, uh, in this video, we talk about the most important parts of the prolog, the terms of the clauses, what are the terms, what is the direction identification, and what is backtracking. Our terms, definitions of atoms, numbers, variables, and structures, and then lists, then the unification, definition of unification, unification of atoms, variables, structures, and so on. And then we talk about the backtracking and the edge. Now we are ready to give more examples, but before that we will have this more complicated picture. So in the next video, we will start from this point and we will have the remaining finished for follow. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next video.